next Saturday. Christmas comes early. Unbelievable! Welcome to this incredible scene. Bills. To the end zone! Chargers. It's a touchdown! An exclusive NFL game. That's fantastic! Live in primetime. Wow! Only on Peacock. With a Christmas gift to their fans. They're having some fun now. Bills versus Chargers. Next Saturday, 7.30 Eastern. Exclusively on Peacock. Today's episode is brought to you by Cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hello, friends. Kirk Henderson and Josh Bo coming to you on what day is it? Today's Thursday, uh, <laughs> November 10th. It's a little after 9 p.m. We had the benefit of two straight early games, but we have the unfortunate outcome of two straight early losses. This time, the Dallas Mavericks got embarrassed by the Washington Wizards, who are without Chris Stapps for Zingas and Bradley Beal, and the Mavericks are staring straight in the face of a existential crisis. Josh, how are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good. I do admit, though, that uh, I appreciate the Mavericks for saving their two worst games for the two earliest games. Oh, yeah. Like, if, like, if we're going to watch two awful, crappy basketball games, like, at least we get to go, we can get done with our site work before 9 That's correct. Or whatever, you know? Right, right. <laughs> Go do something else with our night because clearly right. the Mavericks have something else to do because they're playing <laughs> like they don't give a shit. Um, uh, I mean, at this point, I I don't even. Last night was a Luca lit like was was such a Luca lethargic game that it was easy and honestly correct to lay so much of the problem on him. Uh but. Tonight's game against the Wizards was very different. And it was different in the kind of way that ought to really alarm people. Because if the Mavericks offense, somebody said this to me in a, in a group chat. I'm in with some other basketball fans, but they're all like national basketball fans. And, and the person said to me, it feels like this offense has sort of been figured out to where you just face guard Luca, hope he doesn't go nuts, and then you don't care about anyone else scoring. And I don't know if that's the right read, but I'm looking at what happened, and you pair that with a really, really porously awful defense, and here we are. Yeah. Um <laughs> It's tough. Uh, Brad Townsend had like a uh, man. Let me see if I can pull it. I had it up and then I lost it. So this is again great podcasting. When you're Bullock scored tweets. six points in the opening oh, yes. three twenty-two, and he never t scored again and took only one shot after the first quarter. Yep, Fellow starter that, Dorian Finney-Smith made a three-pointer two twenty-two into the game. He scored two points the rest of the game and only took three shots after the first quarter. Like exactly. that's a that's a process <laughs> problem, right? That, and that's. That's something that someone, like, when you look at it, you're like, ah, Luca's dominating the ball too much. And, like, okay, he only took 21 shots, like, only. <laughs> he took 21 shots tonight. Like, he did, there, he went multiple possessions without really doing much because he was clearly, like, absolutely exhausted. Like, he had hands on his hips, hands on his knees, like, while possession was still going, like, when someone else had the ball. But that just shows, like, you know, they just don't have any guys that can do things <laughs> that can do things yeah. uh, on their own or on the off the dribble like those. And it's not Bullock's fault. It's not Finney Smith's fault. Like it's just well, not there was a there was an incredible post game quote by Kevin Durant after the Nets game. Oh my god! Where he just stabbed the Mavericks directly in the heart, saying, "It's like, well, of course I'm just going to face guard Luca. They don't have anyone who can dribble." I'm paraphrasing, but that is what he said. There was no, like, he was insulting the Mavericks team building. He was saying this team has guys who cannot put the ball on the floor. And it's, 
I guess like I'm not really mad because this is what we talked about all summer. <laughs> I think I'm more mad than you. If Which only... is weird. <laughs> I think I'm mad because it's a back to back, so there's going to be a lot of hand waving. Um, but the Wizards, like, this was not a good Wizards team. Like, nope. they're even trying with, to lose. They even with Bra- even with Bradley Beal and Kristaps, they're like an average team. And the roster that they put out on the floor tonight, I mean, good Lord, Will Barton, who I love as a player when he was in Denver, but he just looks like a guy that's just trying to get up shots and get through the end of the season. That dude threw a pass to end the half. He did like a step back, passed it to a teammate who wasn't looking into his back. They shot someone on the team, I can't remember who, shot a corner three that hit the backboard. They had multiple turnovers that were just them just farting the ball into the wind. like. This was not a good team that they lost. Like, this wasn't – they were scrappy, and Kyle Kuzma went nuclear. But, man, like, I was thoroughly unimp- – like, I was thoroughly unimpressed with what I saw. At least with Orlando, there are, like, some guys that, like – like, I can kind of see it. Like, with with Washington, it was Kuzma and then just, like, dudes. And I'm like, like, great. The Mavs are on a back-to-back. I get it. They were clearly tired. But the Mavericks also only played three preseason games, which they chose to do because they wanted to, you know, play less because it's, you know, uh, save energy, conserve legs. So they only played three preseason games. Entering the game um, against Brooklyn on Monday of this week, the Mavericks were had the second tied for the second fewest games played in the league. They had only played eight games through November 4th. They've had three two night off breaks this season so far they've had one back to back and each back to back their back to back was Oklahoma City Orlando their first one and then they get Orlando what like they each of their back to backs have been cupcake team like you know easy teams so and it's it's also it's November 10th if I don't really want to hear tired legs nope, when nope, don't care have, at all don't I, care I, at all it's don't not care february it's not february i don't care um, it, that shit drove me nuts where it's like, oh, Luca looks tired. I'm like, no, 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 no. Luca looks sick. Luca looks he went out on an election night party. Luca looks <laughs> like he went like like he 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 had way too many dole whips at Disney World the night before. I don't know what they did, but like I'm I'm not hearing this tired shit this early. Yes, kid is playing them a lot of minutes. That's a different thing for a different day. But goodness, like the tired stuff, no. He's 23. Suck it up. Kid with this terrible, terrible pregame quote about how uh, Luca's, you know, he's concerned about Luca making it to Christmas with this. And it's like, got big. Well, we got to find the guy who did this vibes. When it's like, dude, you built the team. Jason Kidd and Nico, uh, we keep on, want to call into him Nico Collins, which is a wide receiver for the Houston Texans. Uh, Nico Harrison built this team together. This is like, like, what, what are we, I said, I wasn't mad. I'm I'm not mad. I'm frustrated because it's like, I do not like Jason Kidd pre and post game quotes where he acts like he is just an innocent bystander to this team where he had nothing to do with any of it. Hate it. Yeah. And I'm seeing people come out of the woodwork, media and related people that are just like, well, gosh, like Luca can't put up this usage like this is unsustainable they gotta change something and it's the same people that who are telling like, us all summer Jaylen, long you can't pay Jalen Brunson and I'm like what is happening no We're this is all gaslighting zone. this is all gaslighting and all this stuff is on the record so it would like I, I am petty enough and don't care enough and would go uh, like would go on a quote tweet treats uh tweet spree if Twitter perhaps wasn't collapsing in and around itself um i the, but it ultimately doesn't matter because here's the thing even if some of our media counterparts felt differently they didn't build the team we the, the people ultimately responsible are are the ones involved with it and that's what makes this particularly interesting because i do think luca will bounce back and be fine i do think luca he, will continue to score 30 point games he will play a fantastic game against portland on saturday night i guarantee you. guarantee it too I, they're going to be in those new uniforms. He loves, like, he gets jazzed by the arena. He doesn't take MVP these teams seriously. Lillard. No, he doesn't. He 
That's he the doesn't. he needs to grow the fuck up and come out and ready to kill these guys. And he never does it against lower level competition. I like the Luca years and the COVID stuff is starting to blend together, but there was one season and I really feel like it was the, I think it was the first, the, the season after the bubble, probably I think where right. they were like under 500 against the worst team, like the bottom 10 in the league. And then they had a incredible record against the big teams in the league. Luca is a generational talent, and I know, guys, we just got done crushing the Mavericks for not surrounding them with more talent. So please understand, I know that that is important too. But Luca has to find the Michael Jordan within him and create bullshit that he's mad about, that he wants to go like and do something against these guys. He he's gonna punish the creative players that the wizard had wizards had on the floor tonight. They had guys I've never heard of. I am an NBA junkie. This is like what. What is it? It's just such a dumb loss in back-to-back games that we saw coming. Like we were not expecting them to win that game in our pre in our uh, in our pregame uh, Slack messages. Our whole group was because it's just like this team has no juice. It's it drives me crazy. Spencer Dinwiddie's the only one playing with force, and if Dinwiddie's not on fire, this game is a blowout by the by the second quarter. They lost a game to a Wizards team missing their two best players. Uh, by eight, and Spencer Dinwiddie made seven three pointers. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, uh-huh. I mean, how do you do shooting? that? How do you do yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you even you even had a pretty good game from Tim Hardaway shooting wise. Mm-hmm. He had a the bad rest second of the team half. played terrible. They yeah. flew. Fr- they they threw Frank Nilakina on the floor for four minutes, where he looked like he can't play basketball. He uh, just had also, to play. I got that was. You know, that's his first four minutes of the season. Shout out to getting up three shots in four minutes, though. Got to <laughs> respect that. That's that's yeah. like it's like five possessions, and he took three of them. Hey, that's he was amazing. a pl- he was a plus four in four minutes, baby. <laughs> and then our then then everyone's favorite and and oh, can we can we talk about it, please? I I'm so mad. What the Josh Green looked like the yeah. guy that like he just looked uh, like another dude. Like he's <laughs> this he wasn't terrible, but he wasn't good. He was. Josh Green, the the guy that he ought to be considered this year, not the quote, not the most improved player chicanery I've heard from people. Like I love it, I love his development. I love that he's showing more that he's shown more in these eleven games than he'd shown the All last two seasons, seasons combined. Agree more, yep. that's great. But I'm seeing, you know, most improved. He should start um, thinking like he's not a bust or like the Mavericks made the right choice. And I'm looking at the Memphis Grizzlies box score from Wednesday when they beat the Spurs in overtime. You know, them struggling with a bat team that they should beat, but managing to find a way to win. Oh, and, and Bain has 32 points. And I'm, <laughs> I'm just, imagine if he was on this roster right now that's and what, what this game would have looked like. That's and what I do. And I'm that's tired, what... people. It was a mistake that they yeah. drafted him, and it's not Josh's fault, and he's developing nope. at a rate that is encouraging, but I'm sick of this bullshit where everyone thinks they made the right decision when they could have had an almost potential all-star coming off their bench or starting the season. And I'm tired of it. That could get them through these crappy stretches when they don't feel like playing good basketball. And I'm yeah. sick of it. No, it's very, it's very frustrating because he, if you, he in a vacuum is making the right kind of strides. I'm sure he will have another good game yes. at home this weekend too, because development is not a linear path i just can't i am having a very hard time with the conversations surrounding it because people want to say oh we need to move on and look the mavericks if if we're being honest like every single decision every signing every free agency every offseason every draft from 2018 forward they drafted luka Doncic and jalen brunson you go examine. Just do this for me. If you doubt me, fine. Tell me where I'm wrong. Every outward decision in free agency, I'm not talking about re-signing their own guys. Free agency and draft. Every single thing the Mavericks have done. And trades, because with Porzingis too, to be quite honest. And Josh Richardson. Every single <laughs> trade, free agency move, and draft move has not worked out. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's wrong, all of them, because that that's some hindsight hubris that I can't totally get behind, even though I'm an arrogant shit myself. But to be this bad 
after je- uh, you know in terms of luck results whatever and then it's luca being incredible that's paper over that's papering over all of it like i want to say that that um I'm just rambling here at this point because I'm mad. Bullock is probably you, the, the best free agency <laughs> signing they've had in 10 years. Reggie Bullock, the guy people want to hang, like, like basically put in every possible trade they can right now to get him off the team. And I think I really like Reggie, but yeah. it's just these sorts of things they build back. And when the Mavericks have a rough game like tonight, all of those things that didn't work out or haven't worked out yet just rise to the surface. They're going to be fine. I still think they're going to win a ton of basketball games, but I just can't help but feel how bad these two losses are. Just like the, uh, I want to say it was the the Magic and um, Oklahoma City losses last year in the spring. But it's mm-hmm. like we're 11 games in. But yeah, and their whole talk about getting to a good start, like that's very, that, that window is shrinking for them to consider them having a good start to the season. Like we're very slowly approaching the the situation where they're going to have to go on another hellacious run uh, if they want to stay within the top four or top five of the conference, you know, yeah. it's happening again. And like dude, Tyrese Maxey is averaging 23 and a half points per game. He's shooting seven, three pointers a game. He's making 42% of them. Uh, Desmond Bain is shooting uh, is shooting forty six percent on eight and a half threes a game. He's scoring twenty four points a game, and like I know it is dangerous to look at that and just you can't just plug it into Dallas no. and assume that's what's going to happen. I'm not trying to say that, but it, maybe half even half that would be wildly better than what they're getting right now. And it's just the potential was there. It just it's these games where it's like, man, you know, Luca doesn't have it. The vets they have are are specifically designed. Like designed is an awful, awful word. The vets that they have are specifically there to do their specific things, take spot up threes, play deep. Like they just, like you said, they have no juice in these games where Luca doesn't have it or he's tired because he just had to score thirty six points a night in in nine straight games, so they could just be six and three. And it's like he's allowed to have two games where he doesn't look good, even though it is extremely frustrating that they happen to be against bad teams. And that is something he does need to fix, but like they just need something like to carry them through these, because Dorian's not going to do it. Reggie's not going to do it. Maxie's not going to do it. Dwight Powell's not going to do it. And it's not their fault. I'm not trying to say they're bad players. They just, they are reliant on Luca to get them their offense. And if Luca doesn't have it, they're just kind of left holding the bag in a way. Like there's just nothing else there. And it would be so nice to have a younger guy they drafted that has some juice and energy and bounce off the game, off the dribble, that could just plow them through these ugly games and ugly moments. Even if it's a lot, you know, even if they still lose, you know, just to give show something and they just don't have it. And as much as we, uh, as much as we crucified the Mavericks for the Dirk era and how awful that they were in terms of getting like that second star next to Dirk, like, <laughs> Like they had Josh, like Josh Howard, and they traded for Devin Harris. Jerry like Stackhouse, they drafted, was an unbelievable basketball player. They, they drafted Devin Harris with a top. Yeah. They traded for a top. Can you imagine if this Mavericks team traded for a top five pick? We would crap our pants. We would yep. lose our minds. We would be so deliriously uh, happy about it. They mm-hmm. they traded for a top five pick and drafted Devin Harris. And remember how many times Harris would come off the bench? You know, I'm sorry. Younger Mavs fans, if you don't remember, we're going down memory lane. But remember, you know, if Dirk didn't have it, and remember those games, he would kind of come in and he would just be like, whoa. And he would maybe play 10 or 15 minutes and change the game uh, and and boost them through uh, to a win, even with Avery kind of being prickly about how many minutes he got, <laughs> kind of following like the Rick Carlisle model. But remember those games? Like, remember Josh I do. Howard I do. coming in and, and dragging the team when they were looking lethargic, when the veterans didn't have it that night? Like, this team doesn't have that. Like Josh Green is great and he's going to develop and hopefully he's a productive player in the rotation going forward, but he's not that type of talent uh, to what, you know, Josh Howard and Devin Harris were when the Mavericks still apparently believed in bringing in like young talent to surround their superstar, which is crazy because we're talking about how, how much we've killed the Mavericks for surrounding Dirk with talent. Like it's yep. just, I'm, 
I don't know why this game made me so mad because what's so stupid, um, now I'm on a super rambly rant. I'm sorry, Kirk. This is Advertiser Content, brought to you by Frito-Lay. Hello, I'm Chip Murphy, here to get you ready for the big tournament. Tonight we'll break down... We break down who will be cutting... Cut! What are you two doing? Sorry, Chip. Prez here got his feathers ruffled when I told him Ruffles has zero chance of winning the title. And I was letting Dip know that she is not taking into account Ruffles' iconic ridges. Guys, it's March. We have to start talking about the tournament. We are. It is the 2023 Frito-Lay Snackin'. We're talking about big-time matchups between Cheetos, Smart Food, Lay's, Sun Chips, and more. Just head to the Frito-Lay Snack Bracket and vote for your favorite chip, pretzel, or dip for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. This sounds great. Keep up the good work. Just go to Frito-LaySnackIt.SBNation.com. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends 4-3-2023. Void wherever hip. Here's worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at Frito-LaySnackIt.SBNation.com. But they're going to play much. I, I would predict they win on Saturday. They're going to play so much better. I think so. And I mean, it's the old guys on this team. And when I say old, I mean like kind of the veteran laden guys really look their age right now. Like Maxi cannot play back to backs. I, I, it's kind of my feeling. He had a nice game last night. He was horrible tonight. He was horrible. And Maxie's just very valuable to what they do. And, you know, like Dorian, once again, 30 minutes, a lot of cardio. Uh, Bullock, the the aforementioned 27 minutes, cardio. Um, You know, they, they tried eight minutes to JaVale McGee again. And I, I really need to thank the, the Mavs media apparatus that got mad at us during the summer for questioning the McGee signing for sort of doing a an about face um to be clear uh this is not an understatement JaVale McGee was the single worst signing of the offseason of any team dollar for dollar for what for what the Mavericks did it's it's a it's a it's a disaster um And so these things all just roll up because Dwight Powell, once again, you know, he's 14.7 rebounds, but is a saloon door at the rim. And we know that that's why McGee was signed. So I have a hard time (laughs) being upset with Powell when he's being put in the position they were told that they fixed. Right. (laughs) Everything that we were told about, oh, we're going to go, you know, I'm convinced this is something I I think I've sort of held back on. I'm just going to say it right now. I'm convinced the Mavs, like apparatus doesn't understand why they got to the Western conference finals. I mean, is that that hard to believe after the, like when you let Jalen Brunson go and you sign a 34 year old backup center to start, I mean, I mean, that should have been it. That was it. Right. That was the indication. It's because the, why they got to the finals to be clear team. Here's why they were getting out rebounded. So they figured that they, they won a game of chess to get to the Western conference finals, which was this. They're going to control the pace. They understand they're going to get crushed on the boards and they're going to gamble and hope that they outshoot teams from three and And play away your threes and take away your threes, which the Mavericks were outstanding at last year through unbelievable defense from Reggie Bullock and Dorian Finney Smith, who eventually got ground into dust. So what did we do? Did we go get any more three and D wings, which is a hard thing to do on the free agency market? No. They instead said that they needed to fix their rebound problem, which was an admirable attempt, even though I still think rebounds are entirely overrated as a stat, particularly with the pace the Mavericks play at, because they play among the slowest paces in the league. And so what we're what we're watching right now is defense that can't stop anybody and an offense that seems to be stuck in the mud at times. And I'm not sure where they where they go from here because there are no answers on the roster that I see other than well, there is one. Okay. I mean, the guy who didn't I mean the guy who didn't oh, yeah, play yeah, yeah, yeah. no, let's go with that. Go with that. God, I can't believe I forgot about Wood. Yeah, so Christian Wood hasn't played the last two games. And if they're I mean he's gotta be thinking, like, I mean, this is if if they don't look at what what has happened to them in these two games, and when Wood is healthy, if they're still doing um, this dog and pony show of giving him, you know, 18 minutes, 21 minutes, 23 minutes while McGee still plays his eight minutes or whatever. Like if they still can't figure it out after watching these two games, then they're, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. They have to, um, they have to figure out the wood. The, they have to figure out their Christian wood thing out. 
Like he has to, he has to matter. And it's because they built a roster. They built a roster where he has to matter. They don't have the luxury of not ha- like being like, okay, we don't really like how you play defense. So you're, you're not going to be uh, preferable. You're going to come off the bench. You're not, you're going to get your 20 minutes. You're going to, you're going to get your eight, eight or 10 shots because we don't trust you defensively. We don't trust you to do this. Well, it's like, well, you know, you didn't bring back Brunson. You didn't try to uh, improve your wing depth. Like, this is the roster you built a roster that is reliant on wood making contributions. So they have to figure it out. If not, it, it's going to look, there are going to be a lot of games like tonight where it's Luca getting kind of grounded out and the other guys don't really know what to do. And, and, <laughs> and you hope Dinwiddie keeps making 40% of his threes, which he's done in like 53 Mavs games. I think he's played in now or 50. Yeah, he's just shooting like 12% above his career. average. <laughs> it's like, insane, but he keeps doing it. So eventually we're just right. going to have to so, accept yeah. it. Well, the catch but and shoot still. stuff he's doing is beautiful because yes, the form is, looks good. I love watching him shoot that. It's the pull-up stuff where I'm like, what the shit? There was a broken possession <laughs> where he hit a rainbow from the yes. left wing that was like, what is that? He's on one right now. Yeah. And they're six and, and they're, five. <laughs> and they're wasting it. Yeah. The Mavericks are 18th in offense uh, since the Memphis game. And the nine games since the Memphis Memphis game, they're 18th in offense. They have a, a slightly negative net rating. Um, and in the games outside of the Memphis game, so the Phoenix game, and then the last nine, uh, they're a minus six in point differential. Um, so that, that Memphis game is hiding a lot of the doo-doo odor of their statistical profile. Yeah, um, which, which happens. I mean, they were getting crushed <laughs> last year in in some losses, so their net rating looked awful. For yeah, they were they had, well, they were like they started like ten and seven, but they had like the eighteenth best net rating in the league. Yeah, they were they were they had a negative net rating despite despite having a winning record. This is a weird team. Why can't yeah. they? <laughs> I posted that tweet a couple of days ago where it's that meme. The why can't you just be normal? And then it's like the kids screaming in the back seat, and I'm just like. <laughs> Why can't this team just be normal? Like, why Why do we have to wait for the calendar to change for them to win at a 60-win team pace? Well, and, like, and that's got to so be the weird. hope, right? That's got to be the hope because there are no fixes. There are no players coming back other than maybe actually figuring out how to use Christian Wood instead of treating him like he's, he's somebody who needs to earn it. Um, I'm not interested in that as a talking point or a concept. I Even if Kit Wood is bought in on it, like, this is – this is prime Luka Doncic playing basketball like Zeus. Like, wh- I'm not – like, get over yourself, kid. Play the guy. Tell him what he's doing wrong and tell him how to fix it. Don't – it's – it's it's. we talked about this on one of the post-game sh- uh, live shows that I did where it's like kid wants him to show show improvement in, in getting the reps in, but he will only give him more reps in if he shows improvement. That is a catch-22. You have to fail in order to take steps forward. Josh Green beating- needed it. The beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> what is the what was the hilarious Elon Musk quote today where he was he's like oh, they, they had some meeting and he was just like, Yeah, we just gotta like party Go harder. So yeah. We have to be more hardcore. That's the Mavericks answer. <laughs> that might be the that might be the the name of my but, my uh my my uh Spotify live. Talk talk to our t-shirt website we work with let's get that on a, on God, a t-shirt. anyways all right this this <laughs> one is, we're just like beating the shit out of a dead horse at this point i'm yeah. sorry for the you know our our we always laugh about this and i talk about this with locked on mass guy nick angstad because our, it's less so for him and isaac because him and isaac are like happy people uh <laughs> versus you <laughs> and i who are malcontents but you just see such a rapid difference um in in downloads and stuff so it's like if you're one of the people that that sat through this and 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 raged with us we very much appreciate you um yeah we don't like this we don't get traffic or listens when they lose like it's we don't want them to lose that's bad bad for us yeah it's amazing (laughs) oh goodness all right kirk henderson josh bow mavs moneyball we got some interesting articles coming tomorrow we have one coming up on pace that i really enjoyed that was written by our guy logan i got a set special submission from Twitter favorite SJ about Luca and heliocentrism that I enjoyed. Uh, and then I'm sure we'll have a couple of more things that are coming out. Jordan has a piece coming up about the schedule, which Jason Kidd is really implying that they're going to sit Luca at some point in the next week. And it's like, you know, they probably should have done it tonight if that's what they're if that's what they're thinking. Luca apparently seemed kind of sick in the post game stuff, like snot and stuff seemed to just not be feeling his best. So that yeah. may explain elements of the of the of the the um, lethargic 
kind yeah. of behavior past two days, which I hope like that's that was actually my first thought. I was like he looked like like a sick kid. So <laughs> we'll see. All right, Kirk Henderson and Josh Bowie had a great time hanging out with you guys. Thanks so much, and we will talk to you guys in a couple of days.